welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. I'm your host, Melanie Kingett, and I'll be your guide to scoring a five. Here at the Absolute Recap, we aim to maximize your understanding and minimize your need for memorization. Each episode will review content, skills, and test-taking tips to help you succeed in May. Your recap starts now. Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. Today's episode will recap transport. Let's zoom out. We're in Unit 2, Cell Structure and Function, somewhere in the topic of 2.4 to 2.7. Our big idea is energetics. I have some bad news. Not everybody is invited to the party. The truth of the matter is, some molecules can enter the cell, others need passwords or special keys, while still others will have to wait in line for a tunnel. It's important that cell membranes establish and maintain their internal environments through selective permeability. Let's zoom in. The fluid mosaic model. Sounds so fancy. Essentially, it implies that the phospholipids, which comprise the majority of the bilayer, along with the embedded proteins, steroids, and carbohydrate chains, are continuously swimming, moving, and shifting around the surface of the cell within the membrane. It is dynamic. And because each of the plasma membrane components has unique chemistry, the molecules that it interacts with for transport will be unique as well. Okay, so who can come and go to the party freely? Take a deep breath and think about molecules that are small, unassuming, but critical to cellular function. Yes, deep breath. Oxygen and carbon dioxide for sure. They are both small and nonpolar and can pass freely directly through the phospholipid membrane. Small polar molecules like water can also pass through, but in significantly lesser amounts. What about large or charged? You're going to need permission. Molecules like ions, amino acids, or glucose will need the assistance of a transport protein or vesicle. There are two types of cellular transport, passive and active. These categories are divided by the use of energy and direction of molecular movement. Passive transport is the net movement of molecules from an area where they are more highly concentrated to an area where they are less concentrated, without the input of metabolic energy or ATP. Molecules are always in motion and bumping into each other. Think about making a cup of tea. When you first submerge the bag of tea into hot water, the tea is most concentrated or crowded inside the bag. But over time, small T particles begin to bump into each other, crossing the membrane of the bag and eventually are evenly distributed in the cup of water. This movement of molecules from high to low through a membrane is called diffusion, and it's a type of passive transport. But the larger T leaves stay in the bag. However, if we poked a hole in the bag, the larger T leaves might also move into the cup, single file, through that pore. The movement of molecules from high to low concentration through a transport protein that's in the membrane is called facilitated diffusion, or literally, diffusion made fossil, the Spanish word for easy. Okay, flip it and reverse it. This How does the cell move molecules against the concentration gradient? What if I want to make molecules more crowded? The movement of molecules from regions of low concentration to high concentration is known as active transport and requires the spending of cellular energy, or ATP. The use of transport proteins for either active transport or facilitated diffusion are often solute-specific. Membrane proteins can have a variety of other functions, such as enzymatic activity, cytoskeleton attachment, and signal transduction. We'll cover many of these in future units. You want to move big things all at once? This will require a vesicle formation. Bringing molecules into the cell, we will borrow from the plasma membrane to form a vesicle through endocytosis. Having molecules leave the cell, the exiting vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, emptying its contents into the extracellular fluid. Students beware, don't fall in this trap. Remember, there is no up, down, left or right in 3D space. Make sure you describe the movement of molecules either into or out of the cell. Molecules don't just move up the page because we're looking at a diagram from that perspective. Don't worry, we didn't forget about osmosis. More to come on future episodes. To recap, 
The structure and chemical properties of molecules affects their ability to pass through the plasma membrane. Small and nonpolar diffuse on through. Large and charge, assistance is needed. Active and passive transport are both essential cellular functions to take in nutrients and get rid of waste for metabolism. Today's question of the day is about membrane structure. What is the effect of cholesterol in the phospholipid membrane? For the answer to today's and future questions, please follow us on Instagram at the Absolute Recap. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E Recap. If you are a student with questions or a teacher with suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a biology topic or another AP subject you would like us to cover on the Absolute Recap, please email us at theabsoluterecap at gmail.com. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E recap at gmail.com. The Absolute Recap is produced by Brad Kingett with music by Zach Caruso. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Time's up, pencils down. Thank you for listening to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. Copyright 2020, Absolute Recap, LLC, all rights reserved. Coming up next on the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, Episode 10, covering Unit 3, Enzymes and Energy.